This is Al Jazeera. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Dura reporting for TV Al Jazeera. According to Bank Negara, in order to have a decent life free from financial worries, the average unmarried person living in Kuala Lumpur should be earning a minimum of 2700 a month. For a married couple within two children, that figure goes up to 6500. That is called a living wages. Over 50% of working adult earn under 2500 according to recent report by the Kazana Research Institute the gap between Malaysia's bottom 40 and T20 segment has doubled from 1995 and 2016 so now we are at lembaga hasil dalam negeri LHDN for income declaration 2019 for the categories of T20 M40 and B40 as you can see from this clip people go to LHDN to seek consultation on their income status this woman right here is categorized under T20 since her income is above 10000 thus she will not be receiving any benefit this is mrs arva she is a lecturer in university malaya from her consultation we could see that her income is 8515 ringgit this shows that she is categorized under m40 because her income is between 4001 to 9000 here we have miss akila she is asking whether she is eligible to receive any government financial aid Based on her income which is below 4000, she is categorized as B40. Thus, she will receive government benefit such as electrical subsidies, fuel subsidies and BIM 1 Malaysia. Median income. Median monthly household income for Malaysia increased to 5228 in 2016 compared to 4585 in 2014 with a growth rate of 6.6% per annum at a nominal value. Median income by household group. The median income of bottom 40% B40, middle percent 40% M40, and top 20% T20 rose in 2016 as compared to 2014. The household group M40 recorded the highest growth at 6.9% per annum, followed by the household group B40 6.6%, then T20 6.2%. Now to the topic of main income. The mean monthly household income for Malaysia has increased from 6,141 in 2014 to 6,958 in 2016, an increase of 6.2% in nominal value. In terms of real value, that mean monthly household income had increased 4.2% per annum. Mean income by household group. All household group recorded an increase in the mean monthly household income during the period of 2014 to 2016. The M40 group recorded the highest annual growth rate at 6.9% from 5,662 to RM 6,502 in 2006. What differs between Malaysia and other countries is the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient is a commonly used measure of income inequality that consensus the entire income distribution for a country in a single number between 0 to 1. The higher the number, the greater the degree of income inequality. Malaysia's Gini coefficient. Malaysia's Gini coefficient's Lango data was reported at 37.16% in December 2016. This record had decreased from the previous number of 37.9% for December 2014. Malaysia's Gini coefficient's Lango data is updated yearly, averaging 42.4% from December 1974 to 2016, with 17 observations. The data reached an all-time high at 51.6% and a record a low at 37.60% in 2016. China's Gini coefficient data was reported at 46.7% in December 2017. This recorded an increase of the previous number of 46.5% in December 2016. China's Gini coefficient is updated yearly, averaging to 47.7% in December 2003 to 2017 with 15 observations. The data reached an all-time high of 49.1% in 2008 and recorded a low percent at 46.2% in 2015. In Malaysia, female's labor labor force participation rate is very much lower than that of males even though they are equally educated. According to the latest salaries and wages survey report 2017 from the Department of Statistics Malaysia, the median wage for male employees increased by 8.2% as compared to the previous year in 2016. 
while female employees saw an increase by 7.0% in fact the median monthly salary for, of male employees was higher at 2170 ringgit compared to female employees which is, which is 2145 ringgit in 2017 Similarly, the average monthly salaries of male employees of 2,954 ringgit was higher than female employees at 2,772 ringgit. According to the Salaries and Wages Survey Report 2017, the median monthly salaries for full-time Malaysian women employees was 98.8% that of their male counterparts. The gap is mainly due to the non-discriminatory factors such as labour market structure. The choosing of measures appears to contribute significantly to gender stereotyping of jobs as well as wage discrepancy. Causes promising high-paying jobs like engineering are mostly male-dominated, while the social sciences, education and arts tend to be low-paying and female-dominated. Likewise, women are paid less than men for the same work. A case in point, women in Malaysia hold more than half which was 55% of professional occupations, yet their monthly salary is 14% lower even in professions where men are outnumbered. If you are a female, you may be pissed off with that stat, but you shouldn't be surprised. Gender wage cap doesn't just happen in Malaysia, it is prevalent around the world. Similar United States, women continue to be underrepresented in high level, highly paid position and overrepresented in low paying jobs. Over half a century after the US passed the Equal Pay Act, American women still face a substantial gender wage cap across the spectrum. Female dominated occupations such as childcare and restaurant services continue to occupy the lower rungs in, of the US led wage ladder. Women make up 63% of workers earning the federal minimum wage rates dropped at $7.25 since 2009. By contrast, women represents only 5% of CEOs at Fortune 500 firms. CEOs took home $13.1 million on average in 2016. Men make up an overwhelming majority of top earners across the US economy, even though women now represent almost half of the, of the country's workforce. Women comp 27% of the top 10%, and their share of the higher income groups runs even smaller. Among the top 1%, Women make up slightly less than 17% of work while at the top 0.1% level, they make up only 11%. As we all know, Malaysian society is a multi-ethnic society with the Malays, Chinese and Indians. It's forming the major ethnic groups. In 1996, the Bumiputra accounted for 61% of the population, the Chinese 30%, the Indians 8%, in the early years of independence, each ethnic group was also separated by their economic functions. The economic activities of the Malay were largely subsistence, agriculture and fishing. The Chinese were involved in commerce and modern sectors of the economy, while the Indians were laborers in the rubber plantations. 2014, the median monthly salaries and wages of Bumiputra employees is by 7.5% to 1% 1,725 in 2014. Indians experienced an increase of 6.5% and the Chinese median remained the same. In terms of main monthly salaries and wages, all entry recorded increases that are Boyoputra 8.1%, Chinese 9% and Indians 9.7%. So, income disparity in Malaysia is taking place due to the development efforts that are geared towards achieving more equal income distribution. From a survey, it is seen that about the income disparity of Malaysia between the years 2012 and 2014 among the urban and rural areas. In 2012, the income disparity of Malaysia according to the statistics Malaysia official portal was around 0.431%. Uh, 
whereas in the urban areas the income disparity percentage is 0.417% and 0.382% in the rural areas respectively. Now talking about the year 2014, the income disparity in Malaysia was 0.401%, in the urban areas the percentage was 0.391% and 0.355% in the rural areas. So concluding that we can say comparing between the income disparity of the urban and rural areas for two years it can be seen that the income disparity was higher in urban areas for both. Now comparing to many other countries, Philippines seems to be an exception as the inequality remains high in Philippines and the trend appears to be stable. The four factors that was found over the survey of three decades from 1961 to 1991, they are number one, rising proportion of urban households, then second is age distribution uh, changes, third increasing number of high educated households and the last is wage rate inequality. There is little evidence of labor market failure in the Philippines since when properly measured wage gap uh, by skill uh, level are modest. For almost three decades, the income inequality between the urban and rural area of the country has been relatively high and steady. Except for a secular decline in the mid-90s, the decrease in the income disparity in 1985 was due to the rise in the in uh, income share of the country and urban area people and it was also found from a survey of the Guinea coefficient of per capita household income was 0 0.388 in 1985 and 0 0.418 in 1991 compared to 0 0.452 in 1985 and 0 0.477 in 1991 for household income. In Philippines, about 40% of the population live in rural areas and 45% of the labor force are employed in agriculture sector. Analysis in the report finds that most of these disparities are due to the long factors such as parents' educational level. Therefore, making productive, long-term investment in high-quality basic education starting at preschool for all Malaysian children is essential to close the education and income gaps. Meanwhile, top 20% earns in Malaysia are 63% tertiary educated. Middle 40% income earners in Malaysia are 25% tertiary educated. Bottom 40% income earners in Malaysia are 96% SPM and below. Therefore, in increase the level of education, when Malaysia has higher level of education and high skill, it will reduce the inequality in wages. Only 5% of young adults from the bottom income quantile have a bachelor degree compared to 40% from the top quantile. Additionally, 84 of nations with a bachelor degrees are in the middle and upper class. This support the argument that higher education leads to higher income. However, not everyone has the opportunity to receive higher education. Therefore, government should strive to make higher education as accessible as possible without abandoning quality standards. Over, what government can do to reduce income gap is to increase taxes for the top income bracket. The tax rate for the top income bracket in Malaysia is low which is at 25% compared to other Asian countries such as Korea which is 38%, Thailand 35%. Increasing this rate of 35% to be more with other countries will help reduce the income inequality in Malaysia. Moreover, a more progressive tax system will also help. The top marginal income tax rate, which is 25%, just now is low compared to the most OECD countries and other Asian Recently, government uh, increased the tax rate, 26 to 28 again. We check, that's for 1 million and above. How many Malaysians that are above their 1 million pay tax. 10,000 people. The scope is too small, tax is not treated fairly. So what being proposed? So government set up tax reform committee chaired by the former income tax director general. Now, if you buy property, expensive property, you buy cars, we're going to give you a tax number. So we know who you are. And we know either you pay tax or not. If you're bidding for government projects, you need to show proof that you pay tax. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. Based on Zakat reports from various years and economic planning unit, the amount of Zakat received by the poor and needy contributes significantly to poverty eradication. 
The study divided the amount of zakat these two groups received by people of PLI of the poor. The needy and poor groups in rich states such as Selangor received a maximum of 500 ringgit per month in zakat financial aid per household. As what we can see here, the more the collection of zakat, the lower the poverty rate will be.